Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. The Pibus Public Market is pleased to offer a series of unique and fun classes for the Wenatchee Valley community. Classes are taught by local volunteers with an interest and aptitude in the subjects that they teach. Erickson, uh, my husband and I own Wenatchee School of Karate. I've been training in martial arts now as of this month for 38 years. Uh, I've been teaching since 1987. And then I, uh, we moved over here in 94 to start our karate school. I've been teaching uh, fencing, karate, uh, self-defense, uh, aerobic kickboxing, tai chi, et cetera, et cetera, for many, many years. And this is probably the most important class that I teach. And the main reason is because of how I personally feel about self-defense and the experiences that I've had over a lifetime. Uh, the first time that I was sexually harassed, I was about 11 or 12 years old, and um, I ended up in a situation with some boys who um, were very threatening, and they knew what they were doing. Uh, they got me cornered, and uh, and I was in total terror. And I will never forget that, even though I was that young at the time and didn't really know what it all meant. Um, they were laughing at me. And no, I will never forget that either. They knew how scared I was. And the best thing that occurred is that they actually let me go, which I have no idea why that happened. I was really lucky that this, this is how that ended up. That was my first experience. I have had numerous experiences since. When I started training in karate in 1980, I already knew that I could defend myself because I did and was successful, okay? So I didn't start karate to learn how to defend myself because I already knew that I could. These situations come up and quite often it might be somebody you already know you're, or are vaguely familiar with, and sometimes they're strangers. We have to have a plan. We have to be prepared. We have to treat it like it's a fire drill, okay? We have to establish some boundaries and make some decisions. And then take a look at our own behaviors. We're talking ideal world versus real world. The ideal world is we would never have to deal about this. As women, we could walk wherever we wanted, wearing whatever we wanted at whatever time of night or day that we wanted. But that's not the real world. This is the one we have to deal with, so guess what? We do the best we can. We learn some things. This is uh, the four A's of our self-defense strategy, uh, starting with attitude. This is one of the most important things that karate taught me, was how to look different. Because trust me, as a young girl and teenager, I looked and acted like a victim. And I didn't know this for years, that I tended to walk around with my head down and kind of buried into myself. I was painfully shy and insecure. And guess what? I looked like a target, which is not good, because I was probably about 20 pounds to 30 pounds lighter than I am right now as a high school student, and I really looked like an easy target, okay? Awareness, okay? This is part of our preparation, okay? And we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Assessment, and looking about our lifestyle behaviors and how we can reduce our risk. And then this right here, that's a big deal. That's the physical reaction, how you are going to respond, whether it's a vocal response or it's an actual physical response. Now, we'll start with attitude. So, how many of you think right now that you could defend yourself if attacked, that you have enough skill and the strength and the power to do that? Now, if you walk down the street, be loud, be proud, you guys, okay? If you were walking down the street and you came around a corner and all of a sudden you start, you see a child being assaulted, how many of you think you could defend that child? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Most people do, all right? There's something inside of us that wants to protect. 
Now, we have to switch this on, okay? This is an attitude thing. We have to turn it on because we have as much worth as that child does, okay? To live and to be unharmed. My number one goal in an attack scenario is to survive that situation unharmed. That's the number one goal, okay? Now, our self-defense techniques should be simple, effective, and easy to remember. If they're overly complicated or they require fine motor control, they're gonna be of no use to you. Um, usually in an attack scenario, because of the adrenaline running through your body, you're gonna learn, uh, you will lose fine motor control immediately, okay? So our self-defense techniques have to reflect that. Now, uh, in looking at attitude, we're gonna talk about walking a little bit and we're gonna work on walking. So I know you're comfortable, but guess what? We're out of the chairs, let's go. Not to that point where you're frantic and running and doing all that stuff, but just so that you're walking with some, some good speed. The other thing you need to be doing is you need to look straight ahead you need to have chest out and shoulders back, and then I'm gonna have you do something really strange. You're gonna walk wider than normal, okay? Uh, the way that women's hips are shaped compared to men's, our hips are here, and then our feet tend to be slightly inward. A man's body from the hips down to the feet will be a lot straighter, okay? So when we look at each other, we pass judgment. That's part of what happens. An attacker is really looking for an easy target and you can't present yourself as a viable target, okay? So you wanna look a little more masculine than you would normally. Now, let's say you're in a group of 10 or 15 people, then what do you do? Relax, okay, <laughs> right? I'm really talking about those moments when you're by yourself. Sometimes we are forced to walk at night for one reason or another. I always tell people, don't do it. It's just too easy to have yourself become a target because the crimes are hidden really at night, too easily. So as you're walking, you're gonna take your pace and instead of having a narrow walk, which is really perceived as a more feminine walk, you're gonna have a wider base. So you're gonna put your feet apart, you're gonna walk forward, striding with some purpose, move your arms as normal. So what I want you to do is you're gonna walk across the floor. You have purpose, you have direction, you have speed, you have posture, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you know, taking up more space than normal, okay? You wanna look like you know where you're going at all times, whether you do or not. If you are outside of town, you're in another city, you're on vacation, you're walking around, don't ever, ever look like you're lost. Don't pull out the map and start looking around and doing that thing. You're a target, just like that, okay? So what I do is I step into a business I ask the person behind the counter, and then I pull out my map. So I'm not so obvious about it, okay? Are you ready? All right, you guys, get walking. Let's go. Look straight ahead. Stride with some purpose and speed. Next six, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Now, looking at them. Now, you guys need to watch now and see what they do, okay? Wider stance. Chest out, shoulders back, eyes straight ahead, and go. Look, don't look down, look. Nice, you guys. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Get the fastest internet available in North Central Washington by switching to Localtel and get speeds up to 1,000 meg. Call 888-8888 today or go online to localtel.net. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Get in a position where you can see us, and if you can stay right there, back it up a little bit. Okay, now, Emily is just gonna normally walk towards me. Okay, so, ready? Okay, go back. <laughs> 
That's not normal. You're creeping. Okay, ready? Okay, come at me. Go. Ready? Stop! Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, you can see how simple that is. That will stop someone. Okay? And it'll stop them cold. It's loud. You're going to get the flinch response from the face, the hand to the face. Okay? You have to be loud. You have to be strong. This is a point where you have to change from being a mild-mannered person to being assertive and then maybe aggressive if you have to. Okay? This is that switch. You got to turn it on. Okay? Because I have to define my universe. I decide who comes in my personal space, when and where and who. If I'm uncomfortable, then I defend my personal space. Some people's personal space is very big. Some people's personal space is smaller. The closer in you allow another person to yourself, you give them more of an opportunity to grab you. Okay? You should be coming more and more alert the closer they are to you. Does that make sense? So as you do this, we can spread out in the room. And all I want you to do is, please don't hit them in the face for reals. Okay? <laughs> Just because. Okay? <laughs> Dang. Okay? All right. So as they come towards you, you're going to move in, and you're going to put that hand right out. We are very sensitive to our eyes and nose. Those are great targets, you, you know, right? People flinch when that goes on. And that's a good reaction to know that people will do that automatically. If you actually hit someone to the nose, then the flinch response is there, the eyes water. Sometimes all you need is a couple of seconds to get away. That's all. All right? So spread out, use the whole room, and walking at your partner. Make them stop. Okay. Okay. So, as far as the chair is concerned, you have movements where you're going in the opposite direction, right? With your arms. Okay. So, if I'm coming at you, then what you do is you take that, moving that in opposite directions, and try and hit me with the chair. Yes. So if someone is leaning over at you, absolutely, absolutely. You can also, if I'm coming towards you like this, I want you to take your hand and just do the stop thing, okay? I'm going to come towards you. You're going to do stop. Go, stop, really loud, okay? All right, get ready, and I'm going to go. Stop, nice, nice, okay? That's great. All right, now, you guys, how you guys doing? Be aggressive, be loud, be strong, yell at her, scare her. <laughs> Stop, nice, nice, okay? How'd that feel? Good. Does it feel good? Okay, excellent. Now, this is really starting to vocalize, okay? This is starting to, um, you know, exert yourself forward at the other person, okay? So. An attacker is looking for a target and an opportunity. They are not looking for a fight. They are not looking to attract attention, right? So what they want to do is whatever their crime is against you, and it might be they want your purse, OK? My advice, let them have it, OK? and throw it as far away from you as you possibly can. Yell and run. Be loud, okay? That whole stop thing has got to be something that they realize, hey, I don't want to mess with this one. This is not a good target, not a viable target. Uh, a few years ago, I was with uh, my sister and my niece at Fred Meyer over in Olympia. And there was a panhandler. We were going out of the, the side of the building, kind of more isolated, where the nursery was. And, uh, and we came out, and he was standing just outside of the doorway. And what he did 
is, you know, he's trying to bum some money off us. And of course, being women, we do what we do. We don't make eye contact, we start moving, we start moving a little faster, and we're trying to get away. Now all of a sudden, this guy's following us and continuing to harass us. So I turn around really fast. I'm in the back because I know my sister and my niece are like, she's got this. <laughs> you know, we're out of here. <laughs> and I turn around and I go, don't you follow us. And he's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I mean, scared him half to death. Is he expecting that? No. What's he expecting? How do... Submission, passivity, okay? We're so used to, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That's how we respond. And in society, this is what an attacker is expecting, okay? And when a lot of us who are older, we look at what society was like when we were growing up. You're quiet, right? You don't offend people. You play nice. Girls don't act like that, but yeah, I always did, but <laughs> I got in trouble a lot, okay? <laughs> you can imagine. So that attitude thing is really important. And my idea on this is we want to take away, right, that opportunity. And we want to look different to someone from the outside. An attacker is passing judgment on you as you're moving around through your universe. Whether you know it or not, they're looking, okay? And they're trying to ascertain who you are and whether you'll defend yourself or not. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. For all the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Many years ago, psychologists did a study uh, down in California at Chino's uh, prison down there. They wanted to try and figure out how an attacker chose their target for whatever crimes they were doing, whether it was assault, whether it was sexual assault, whether it was um, burglary, it didn't matter. They asked a bunch of them. They sat them down, and they gave them pictures of people walking down the street. Pick a target. Who would you target for this crime? And over and over and over again, they're picking the same people. So they had different pictures. OK, where's your target? Boom, that one. Next picture, that one. Then they start bringing in other people. They're picking the same people. So we're sending unconscious sig signals to other people about who we are and what we're going to do, how we're going to react. From physical appearance, your hair, your body language, your clothing, how you take care of yourself, your physical presentation. So the psychologist said, how do you know who to attack? And I said, well, that person doesn't care enough about themselves to defend themselves. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Then they took the pictures again. They said, all right, who are you going to avoid? And they picked. And then they did more pictures and picked. And then the next person came in. They're picking the same people, all right? It's different from the one that they would attack, though. What about this person? Are you going to leave them alone? Well, she's got a gun in her purse. <laughs> really? How do you know that? Well, look at how... She's walking. Look at how she's carrying herself. That's not someone I want to mess with. You have to exude that. Fake it till you make it if you're not feeling it. But you've got to feel it inside. You've got to have that feeling of, yes, I will defend myself. I have the right to be here. I have the right to be not be harassed. Okay? And then that's what you want to look like all the time. Okay? Really, you guys, I want you to be prepared, not paranoid. All right? Self-defense is my lifestyle. 
So I do certain things, even though I've trained for 38 years and I'm a seventh degree black belt, I still do the safety stuff, all of it, as far as checking my surroundings, as far as paying attention to where I am, what I'm doing, am I safe? Now I put some of these things around the room that my husband did all this for me, it's just amazing, to talk about this a little bit, okay? And it talks about being followed and walking around and when I walk around by myself, I always have things in my pockets. Here's one, okay? And this is pepper spray, okay? And then my keys, okay? The keys I can use as a flail. I can swing this and hit somebody with it. I can also take the keys and I can put them between my fingers. And then I would use those as a rake. Okay, so here, start taking some keys, and then that's a rake. I would use the rake to go across someone's face in a slashing motion, or forward and at them. Okay, so a lot of times people feel more confident when they have something with them. This is zero, zero good to you if it's in your purse. You're never going to get to it in time. The attack will happen so quickly when it does, and I'll talk to you about other circumstances, but so quickly that unless this thing is in your hand, it's zero use to you. Okay? So, I'm out walking. I have certain areas I go. There are some areas that get isolated. I take this out of my coat pocket. It's in my hand. It has a safety on it, and I know that. And I know I have to move that. It's two moves, you guys. This is something you have to really, if you're going to do something like this, you've got to know how it works. Okay? You have to mentally practice it. Now, I tend to flip that little switch. No, I don't push it. Okay. <laughs> and I, pull, I do that occasionally just to have that feeling of knowing what I'm doing right, when I use this, if I ever have to use it. Other things I carry, or that you could carry, have to do, now some of these things you can't get uh, on an airplane, okay, don't even try, all right, so one of the things I have is called a kubaton, okay, all right, this is an awesome keychain weapon, all right, so reinforces the hand, you can also strike with this. You put the keys on the other end, you've got a flail, okay? So, again, this is not going on the air, airplane at all. Um, this is another keychain spray. This is blue, all right? So you get into this, you're going to dye them blue. You're going to tag them, okay? So, these other things, flashlights. You want to, now here, I can actually reinforce my hand, my fist, and it's crenellated on the end. This is a dangerous thing. You start swinging at people, face, wherever, collarbone, leg, arm, doesn't matter. You want these, if you've got this as a flashlight, find the ones that are high lumens, okay? So you could use it in the face or you could use it for striking with, okay? Here I have one of them is a tactical pen, all right? This is actually a pen, okay? Now, not sure if you can, can you get this one on the airplane? I, I don't think try. you can. I that one. The okay. other one, I went through TSA without a problem in my shirt pocket. That's stainless steel, so it still has the same kind of impact. Okay, so this is an actual functional pen, okay? These are really cool, all right? You can slip them into a pocket, and in many circumstances, something like this you can travel with this. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Are you wanting high-speed internet but don't have access to PUD Fiber? Try SkyFi high-speed wireless internet from Localtel. Call 888-8888 today. 
Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Now, when you do this, please don't do this with a lot of resistance at the beginning. It takes some time to get used to the techniques and gradually start applying some resistance. So at the beginning, just get an idea of how the technique works, okay? Then as time goes on and you practice things like these, then you can increase the resistance. The key is making circles, okay? And we keep it very simple. So she's gonna be the attacker. She's gonna grab my wrists. Okay, flip your hands over. There you go. All right, so as she grabs, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hands. I'm gonna go outside. Hang on. I'm gonna go around her wrist with the little finger, and then I'm gonna shake her off. So I take my fingers down in the middle, and then I get some space, okay? Because she's in my personal space right now, I'm not liking it, and she grabs me, okay? Now notice I haven't hit her or anything yet, okay? So she grabs me, <laughs> uh, qualifier, okay? So I'm here, I'm gonna go nice and slow. I grab on, don't let go, don't let go, don't let go. And look what I'm doing to her arms. There's a natural release here, okay? I go around her wrist with my little fingers, and then I'm gonna back up and hopefully not fall over my height. Yes, here, I'm gonna go outside in, just like that, here. Now I'm not snaking around her this way. That's not gonna do me a lot of good. Actually, I could do stuff from here, but <laughs> we won't worry about it. Okay, so here, I'm gonna go outside in, and then I back up, okay? So let's try inside. And from here, outside in, and then I'm back, okay? So I like the distance thing. Watch your space. Please do it three times each, all right? How do you get it? Ready? Outside in, nice, good. Good, good. There you go. Outside. Now, little finger is going to come around. Keep coming. Turn, turn, turn. And now. My little finger towards her body. Uh huh. And go ahead and grab me for a sec. Okay. So, grab tight. Okay. I'm going to go around. Okay. So, look what I'm doing to your arm. It kind of hurts. Uh huh. So, here. Okay. That's my release. All right. Go ahead. Try it again, you guys. Now drive down, yes, 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 yes. When there's resistance, then you're gonna have to do something different, okay? You're gonna have to modify the move, all right? Because anytime we do a technique, we want it to be quick, we want it to be smooth, we don't wanna stop in the middle, okay? Now if there's resistance, so Junko, if you can come, okay? So here, I start this, I move outward, and I feel the resistance. Now I'm gonna do the exact opposite, and for a second, she's, she'll relax, okay? They're not expecting it. A natural reaction is to resist, whether it's to pull away, or to try and move, or whatever it is. They're not expecting us to go the direction that they're pushing, okay? And so that's the direction we're gonna go. I start to come out, she resists, resists, so I clap, and then I go around, okay? So I'm gonna bounce here. So I feel that resistance, immediately go the opposite direction. So this is a concept that's kind of a push-pull type concept. If they push, you pull. If they pull, you push, okay? It puts them off balance. That's one of the ways to counter resistance. Okay, another way of counting, countering resistance is I drop instead. I go towards her, which is again, not a direction she's expecting. So she's expecting that I'm gonna pull away, right? That's normal. That's what we do as human beings. Somebody grabs us, we're like, no way, I'm out of here, right? So instead, I'm gonna go towards her and drop. So I drop down and then I do my technique and I get, make some distance between you. Okay, 
So these two things we did, clap and go, and then sink and go. Please try those three times each. Go ahead. Okay. Clap and go. Fast, fast, fast. Yes. Yes. And always back away from her. Okay? All right? Yeah. Because think bad guy, get away. Boom. Yes. That was great. Very good. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Please join us weekly for the 12th District with yours truly, Carrie Condotta. Check your channel guide for times or go to ncwlife.com for details. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Okay, now, so my husband and I will do this together. Okay, <laughs> so I can start with my weapons as my own head, okay? So I can be striking forward with the forehead into the nose. If this is from behind, watch the mic, I can also be coming straight back and into the nose, all right? This is a very sensitive, very vulnerable part of the body, okay? If you can turn and face them, all right. Now, as far as teeth are concerned, this is a choice, all right? Biting. Okay, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, all right? If he puts his arm around me and I feel that, I'm going to duck my chin and I'm going to sink in, okay? If you're going to bite, do it and really mean it, okay? So you've got very strong jaws, uh, use them. Now some people go, no, this person could have disease, I'm not going to do that. In the moment, guess what? You have to make a decision, and you've got to do it quickly, okay? So I can use my teeth. I can use my mouth, obviously, for vocalizing, being loud and obnoxious as possible. For my fingers, I'm going to be using fingers to rake, okay? I can use fingers for poking, right, into the eyes. I can use the edge of the hand. Now, so if you'll turn... If I do this and I'm striking with the edge of the hand, I would go at the nose, I would go at the throat. Those are two targets that I would do with the edge of the hand. Now, if you're going to the throat, this is really dangerous, okay? If you hit that, that person doesn't have a lot of time, okay? The air can be cut off if that's crushed. So we're talking life and death moment, okay? Do you feel like your life is in danger? That's the moment in time where you have to switch that on. You have the right to defend yourself. Okay? You tell, you know, you get into a court of law. My life was in danger. I had to defend myself. Right? There it is. That's your responsibility. Okay? So, when we do something like this, then we already know what, what the responsibility is on our part, okay? If I've hit this person and they're not backing off and they're still attacking me, they've got a weapon, whatever it is, okay? Um, you know, spear hand, that sort of thing can be used, but a lot of times people don't train for stuff like that, okay? In the old style mar uh, martial arts, uh, they did board breaking. Our karate instructor did board breaking with his fingers. That takes years to develop. I wouldn't do it. Unless you really practice it, you're just going to bend your fingers, probably get them broken, okay? There are better techniques to do. In self-defense, I don't typically teach a punch unless you're planning on training in karate. You're planning on doing punching regularly and hitting things because this is really hard to figure out how to do correctly, okay? It takes a while. It's not hard, but... There are other weapons on our bodies that are easier to use and more reliable and will go in more directions. So fist hammer. This, with the edge of the fist, I can be going to the nose. I can be going to the cheekbone. I can go to the side, to the jaw. Um, I tend to stay away from the lips because of the teeth. Okay? You, uh, I mean, things will get cut open really easily on your own hands. Okay? 
You can go to the ears. You can go to the mastoid. Again, side of the neck, front of the throat. I can fist hammer down to the collarbones, which actually break pretty easily. Okay. Other targets. These areas here are a lot stronger on most people, and they don't make great targets. Okay. Ribs, yes, you could fist hammer to the ribs. Groin, absolutely, straight down, okay? Um, elbow, this is the best weapon you have on your body, okay? You don't have to learn how to use this, just swing it, okay? It'll go in directions that the fist will not go. So my elbow can go across one direction, it can go the other way. If I'm here, I can drive it down into the collarbone. Okay, I can bring it up under the chin. I can go into the ribs. Okay, I can go from behind. I can create some space between us, right? I can sh take my shin, drive it down, I'm sorry, my heel, down the front of his shin, and then stomping here. Okay, that's getting into more weapons, right? So when we look at this, we have to look at our whole body and what it can potentially be doing. You know, think for a moment to yourself, if you've ever seen a small child throwing a temper tantrum, who's seen that? Raise your hand. Okay, who's ever done that? Okay, <laughs> yes I did. Now, <laughs> sometimes, okay, so you're laying, the kid's laying on the floor. The last thing in the world you're gonna be able to do is move them and try and pick them up. They're flailing, everything is moving, right? That's great self-defense, actually. Flailing, you're moving your entire body. It's exhausting, okay? If you ever watch a wrestling match, it's very much like that. When you are struggling with someone, it's, it's pretty tiring. Um, as a teenager, I experienced this. And even though I know that the attack was very fast and that it didn't last very long, um, it was very, very hard. So. Weapons, you use what you have at hand, okay? You got heel hand. This is what we started with at the beginning of the class when we were yelling stop, okay? This I would take into the nose, all right? That's probably the best target. Uh, the back of the hand, back fist, okay? Knee and foot, all right? So knee to the groin works, you guys, all right? On the feet, you have a lot of different weapons. You can go with the ball of the foot. You can go with the edge of the, the foot. You can also go in the heel, all right? Now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have nine of the karate people uh, grab shields. You should end up with four people in each group. And I'll demonstrate which techniques we're going to do against the shields, OK? So this first one, we're going to do a fist hammer, all right? And this, go ahead and take your hand, put the thumb across between the two rows of knuckles. So it's right in between. And all I'm going to do with this, and I can do this as an elbow strike or a fist hammer, and we'll probably play with both. You never put your thumb on the inside. You actually hit something with that, you probably break or dislocate your thumb. Okay? It never does this. It never does this. The fingernails get hidden on the inside, the thumb goes across. So when I hit this, I'm not going to hit this out here, I'm going to bring it in a little closer. I want to use my whole body going towards this target. So I'm never going to take this and do something like this, all right? I'm not very big, so I want to twist into it. So when I'm striking, I'm going to start up high and then bring it down low and you can see the motion of my body I'm turning with that strike okay anytime you hit something you really want to have all of your body weight and momentum going at the target whatever that target is okay I can do the same thing with the elbow driving down I'm here and then I drive down and notice that I twisted into it so for now, we're just going to do the fist hammer, all right? You can try this a few times with one hand, do the other hand, just get what that feels like. Notice I have one foot, got the left foot in front, and I'm going to turn towards this and hit it. 
So it's up high, and then drive it down, okay? And we should yell at him. Absolutely. Yell stop, okay? <laughs> or no, either one, okay? So when the holders hold on right now, don't hook your fingers underneath it, okay? Hold it flat this way, all right? When you're hitting, again, hit it more towards him, not away. And yell, loud as you can, stop, okay? Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Stay up to date with what's happening in North Central Washington. Go to the NCW Life community calendar at ncwlife.com. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. There's one technique that I showed earlier um, that we're going to demonstrate right now, and I'm going to have you guys go ahead and do against the shields, okay? And uh, Junko, if you want to come up behind me, and when you hold, yes. okay? So holding this time, get your fingers out of the way, okay? Please, and thank you, all right? Yeah, when they start swinging the elbows back, you don't want your fingers on the shield, okay? So she's going to hold on, and she's going to be coming from behind me. And this is one of the, yeah, not that way. Okay, <laughs> okay, awesome. I don't know what she's going to do. Elbow strikes. Oh, I'm so afraid. Okay. Oh, don't gone. be afraid. Come on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be going back behind me. And when I do it, I'm going to turn my body one way and then the other. And I want to drive back at her, okay? And I'm not only causing some damage to those ribs, I'm also creating some space. And I do like my space, okay? If I can create some space between me and that person, then what that means, I have more likelihood of getting away from them. Once I get to a position where I can move away from them, then I'm going to be trying to break them down to the point that I can do something that the attack will stop. All right? Does that make sense? We want to get to that point where we have space. Most attacks are going to come from behind. Okay? Most of the time, the grabs are going to be from behind. This is going to happen, the wrists might get grabbed, and then immediately going to a secondary location and then down to the ground, okay? So when we start looking at this, a lot of times people feel like, I go to the ground, I don't have any defense. You're wrong. You can still defend yourself from the ground, okay? We have kids that we teach them, and I'll do this up here, we teach them that when they get on the ground, they put their hands behind them and their feet up, and then they start kicking, okay? And we teach this to the kids when they're tiny. I have three and four-year-olds in the dojo. Some of these techniques that you're doing today, they already know. They learn those immediately, okay? Because they have to have a way of getting away. When we hit, we hit hard. This is kind of flailing, right? That's self-defense. It's not pretty. It's not A, B, C, D, E, okay? Now that teaches a block and a kick and some elbow strikes, which is great, but in self-defense, it typically doesn't end up in that nice, neat order. Um, it's just chaos. It's just you flailing around and trying to make some contact, okay? You're gonna do this here, palms up, all right? Striking back, twist your body, and hit. The greatest weapon you have for self-defense is your brain. Okay? Now, you really, in these situations, we really have to try and keep um, our wits about us. And that's hard. Okay? You have the adrenaline coursing into your body. Okay? You've got your increased uh, heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, etc. Your body is in total freak out mode. 
Okay? We talked about earlier, you lose fine motor control quickly. It's very easily to, easy to start hyperventilating. So, you got to breathe. The strangest thing to teach in a self-defense class. Breathe. Okay? This induces a relaxation response in the body, but it also is applying, uh, it's bringing blood to the brain, oxygen. You've got to start looking at how to plan things, right? Having a plan, thinking ahead of time. Someone's walking towards you in the park, okay? I like to look at people. Now, most of the time, I don't try and look them in the eyes because sometimes that's not so great. So what I do instead is I look at her forehead. Now, I know immediately if this person is going to nod and say hi and smile and that sort of thing, and if they're not. A lot of times, some people, no eye contact, nothing, you know, you don't exist. I'm like, okay, whatever. It's great practice. Start looking, seeing the intentions of another person. All right? Body weaknesses. Ears, eyes, nose, throat, jaw. This is fish hooking, okay? This is sticking a finger on the inside of the mouth and pulling, okay? We talked about collarbone, solar plexus. This is where you get the wind knocked out of you. Somebody elbows you in the solar plexus. Groin, all right? Knee, shin, and feet, okay? So when we look at our body weapons, then we want to look at appropriate targets. I don't go for this part of the body because I really feel like a lot of times people have pretty strong core, relatively speaking, compared to other things in the body. And we really want to aim for things like the ribs and especially the floating ribs, okay? Collarbone. These things break a lot easier, okay? Awareness. Hearing, seeing, sensing, feeling. Using intuition and paying attention and listening to that inner voice that says, this isn't right, something is wrong. A lot of people who are um, in assaults, they have a moment in time where they say later, I felt like something was wrong. Okay, That to me is a signal to get out and get out now. Don't block your senses with earbuds, your headphones, right? Talking on the telephone. This all blocks the senses. I see this everywhere I go. People on bikes, running, walking, fitness, in their cars. It's just constant. Ask yourself, am I safe right now? Okay? Then you have to look at your lifestyle, what you're doing, and whether or not you're making sure that you're safe, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, we have to look at our home safety, which I've posted up there. Vehicle and travel safety. I don't have work safety up there. That's another one, okay? This has to do with the environment around your workplace. What changes in your life are you willing to make to ensure that you are safe. Is your vehicle in need of a quick oil change or tune-up before hitting the road this summer? Stop by Quick Lube and Tune, the home of the good guys at 610 South Wenatchee Avenue.